Hello everyone, this is the final recommendation on the parking pilot program as discussed at the most recent Transportation Commission. The next Transportation Commission meeting will be held on April 23rd, 2018 at Village Hall in the Council Chambers. We look forward to having residents and businesses alike uh, come and voice their opinions as the Transportation Commission wants to hear the public's comments and use those comments in amending or finalizing this recommendation. The discussion begins with on-street parking. Currently, if we look at meters, however, as we proceed in the coming years, that'll be pay-by-plate technology or pay-by-space. We want to add meters or pay-by-plate technology on Madison Street. The meters in this area are needed as a parking management tool. Pay-by-plate is a mechanism similar to the individual units or technology stations in Chicago. However, rather than putting in a space number, you would put in your license plate. Also, you would not have to put the paperwork back in your vehicle because once your plate is paid, it shows up in our system that that plate is paid for for the designated amount of time. We looked at removing meters. There are no identified locations to remove meters in the pilot area. The meters in this area are needed as a parking management tool. From 6 a.m. to 8 a.m., the meters would be unrestricted or pay-by-plate. I'll refer to them as meters since pay-by-plate is a modern form of meters. They would be unrestricted. Parking is currently unrestricted and it's at no cost during this time frame. From 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., paid parking hours to increase and create turnover. Charging after 6 p.m., which is the current time that payment terminates, would create an opportunity for an additional dinner shift for businesses based on the fact that vehicles would either be compliant with payment or non-compliant. It makes enforcement a bit easier. And one of the considerations of the Transportation Commission is that if there's any increase to paid hours in the pilot area, it must actually be completed village-wide to enhance the pilot program and not to uh, create issues for that pilot program area, but also to assist village-wide with the parking management tool that we are putting in place or mechanism, which is paid parking from 6 to 8 p.m. 8 p.m. to 2.30 is currently unrestricted. Parking would remain unrestricted at that time, and it would be no cost. From 2.30 a.m. to 6 a.m., currently there's no parking in metered areas. However, the recommendation is that with a permit or a pass in the pilot area, you would be authorized to park in the designated meter spaces that assist with overflow of permit and pass parking. Those meters are designated as both sides of Pleasant, the diagonal spaces on the west side of Marion, and on Madison. Again, that's from 2.30 a.m. to 6 a.m. Paid parking regulations would apply Monday through Saturday, again beginning at 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Paid days would be Monday through Saturday. That's as is. Again, meters would be converted to pay-by-play technology. And free days would be Sunday. That's as is. The rate structure would become paid dynamic pricing, which is a th after three hours, the pr parking rate would escalate. There'd be no time limit. So for an example, at a dollar an hour, which is the hourly rate, after three hours of parking, that license plate would now be subject to an escalated parking rate. Again, for example, $3 an hour. This creates an opportunity for individuals who absolutely need to stay in that space or last minute found out their doctor's appointment or their closing for their home or whatever it may be was extended and don't want to have to move their car completely, but it deters people from staying all day. For on-street parking, 
and we're looking at daytime restrictions. Any unrestricted streets would remain as is. That's current streets within the pilot area without parking regulations will have, uh, will not have any policies changed. Time limits. So current streets that have a time limit, that's one hour, two hour, three hour, four hour parking. That would be standardized to three hour parking, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday, excuse me, Monday through Saturday. Again, that would be standardized to three hour parking, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Saturday. We'd also have to look at the future at short term parking, like 15 minute, 20 minute, 30 minute, 45 minute, and one hour parking to see if there can be a standardization on that. For streets that have time restrictions, an example of current streets that have time restrictions would be no parking 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. or no parking 12 to 2. These types of restrictions would be converted to three hour parking 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Saturday. In both cases, time limits and time restrictions, what ends up happening is you standardize to time limits and a permit or a pass for a resident that lives in that area would be able to override a time limit or the t uh, what has now become the time limit. That, that's an issue that we commonly see that someone who lives on a block that has a time limit or time restriction creates a lot of issues for them as a resident and the restriction or the time limit that was put in place was meant to assist them in finding parking. However, it's actually done the opposite. So allowing a resident with a permit or a pass to override the time limit would assist those residents. And how far would you have to move if you're not a resident and you've parked for three hours? Currently, um, it's traced by block and that would remain as is. And this practice prevents people from moving one space up the block. Restricted days would be Monday through Saturday. Non-restricted days would be Sunday. And there are some special restrictions in the, in the pilot area which would remain as is. Staff is defining special restrictions as state level restrictions, school safety restrictions, or hospital area restrictions. So let's look at the pilot area. Pilot area South Boulevard to Harrison and Harlem to Oak Park. The areas in blue are currently open unrestricted daytime spaces which would remain that way. The areas in green are currently three hour time limits which would standardize as we, or excuse me, they're currently time limit areas that would standardize to three hour time limits. And the areas in red that then have green dots, the red signifies time restrictions and the green dots signify standardizing those to time limits, the three hour time limits that we talked about. Orange in this area and also in this area are metered parking. D97 has some staff parking in the area and there's some residential daytime permits in the area, again, near the hospitals. Those would remain as is. On-street parking, as we look at permit and pass parking, that's more so during the overnight hours or the overnight ban, 2.30 a.m. to 6 a.m. Existing permit spaces would now allow for both permit and pass parking. You'd still have to abide by no parking rules, such as no parking in front of red curbs and fire hydrants. Um, sidewalks and driveways, but anyone with a pass or a permit could park in any permit space. Existing pass spaces are currently where passes can park and not permits. Those also would be open to both type of registered vehicles, a permit or a pass. Again, you'd have to abide by the parking rules of the area. Example, no parking red curb, no parking fire hydrant. However, anyone with a pass or a permit would be able to park in any legal parking space from 2.30 a.m. to 6 a.m. if they are registered. So who could register? Residents of the pilot area can register, resident guests, and resident service workers only. There will be a consideration for local employees without parking options uh, on the east and west streets only. An example would be those that are further from the downtown area and for example, a daycare. Who does not have enough parking options? 
How long would you be able to park on a street? You'd be able to park um, all week except once a week there'll be a designated day for example no parking on the south side of the street Mondays from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Permit or pass does not override that restriction. It allows for vehicle abatement, street maintenance, leaf removal, and other necessary uh, public work that needs to be done. Again, once a week, a vehicle would have to move. Mandatory. Additional permits would be available at a higher tiered pricing. And the reason why is to continue with assisting the village in our desire to be more green and to promote other modes of transportation. This is looking at the night restrictions. This is the parking permit map. The areas in green, for example, here, and it's overlapped by the previous or the existing parking permit map, which shows parking on uh, streets in purple, designated in light purple. But the areas in green would allow for two sides of parking. That's currently the practice in most areas. It would change in some areas. The areas in red and yellow are streets that are either 30 feet or smaller in width, and those would allow for one side of the street parking. That would be something that's designated by the fire department, by the police department, and by the public works department to choose which side of the street. However, one side of the street would keep it as clean as possible during the overnight hours to make sure that fire and safety can be addressed on a nightly basis. This would give us a space inventory of the complete pilot area of approximately 1,700 spaces on street. Off-street parking, that's paid parking off-street where it's unrestricted would remain as is. Where there's time limits, three hour parking, they would remove that time limit in favor of the new rate structure. And that new rate structure that we talked about earlier is the escalated parking rate. So after three hours of parking, the rate would significantly increase. Again, the, the reason why is for those that absolutely need to park for more than three hours, we don't want to have to greet them with a ticket. We want to give them some kind of a parking option, but we also don't want everyone parking for more than three hours in those spaces as we have garages that are readily available for long-term parking. Where there's permit parking off street, those are parking lots again, that would be, we would keep that as is with future staff review and the Transportation Commission would assist with setting up some guidelines to determine how those spaces should be allocated and constantly reviewed by staff to make sure that we're being as efficient as possible in off-street parking spaces. So let's look at this permit slash pass matrix and what qualifies you to get one. Every resident in the village would be able to, if you look at this blue area, register for free by address regardless of vehicle ownership. If I don't own a vehicle, I would qualify for 24 hour passes for both myself when I'm renting a vehicle or my visitors when I have a child visiting from school or when I have a friend visiting from out of town. Those would be 30 free per plate per year. An additional would be $7 each. Pricing follows um, what we currently have in the overnight passes. What happens now is your guests don't have to move their cars throughout the day. And also, it's limited to only guests of residential registered uh, people. There would be some subsidies for passes, and that's in the yellow. And that would be for care providers, for tradespeople, and for employees. Again, we talked about that earlier of local businesses. What that allows is if you have a caregiver or, for example, a plumber who's a tradesperson coming into town and they've already used up their 30 free per plate per year, they would be able to pay a subsidized fee, not the $7, but something significantly cheaper, to not have to move their car every three hours. We've heard from a lot of individuals that the constant having to move around cars is actually something that results in tradespeople or care providers not wanting to provide services in the village. And when those, vi when those services are to residents of the village, we want to make sure to make that as easy as possible. 
If we look on the other side of this chart, we look at I do own a car and what that means. There's a mandatory vehicle sticker in the Village of Oak Park. That's $70 per year. Um, that would remain as is. And then there's two options. So you may only need a night permit or you may not need it. It would be an option, optional add-on at $540 a year. That's the current rate for a permit in this area, for a night permit in this area. And there would be a day permit option add-on, which is $70 per year. That's again the exact current rate. In conjunction, if you have a day and night permit, you would be able to move, leave your car in a space all day. Um, it, again, if you're a resident, you can qualify for these. But if you only need a day permit, for example, you have a parking garage and you need something in the daytime as you're going in and out, or if you only need a night permit, you, can only, you would only have to buy that. And if you need not, neither, all you need to get is the vehicle sticker. There would be some subsidies, as we currently have for the vehicle sticker, and we would apply to these day and night permits. Those subsidies include a reduced rate for seniors, for active military and disabled veterans, for disabled placards in the state of Illinois, and for low income uh, or low income discount. And an example of a potential qualifier would be a housing choice voucher. However, it's not something that the village staff would administer. Um, qualifying, we would use some kind of a pre-qualifier. And we're open to suggestions on what that pre-qualifier should be. I wanted to represent that these are fees are as existing in the areas. And these are the existing fees for the vehicle sticker. Some additional information. Well, what would signage look? What we are recommending is that we use the standards as set by the Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices from the U.S. Department of Transportation, Federal Highway and Administration. We think that the simplification of rules will make it easier to read the signs and less confusing, which will resolve one of the constant concerns that we get is that the signage is confusing. We believe that. It's actually not the signage that's confusing, it's the amount of rules that's confusing. Enforcement, there would be a clear and consistent message which would make enforcement efforts easier and thus increasing compliance. There would be dedicated enforcement personnel to the pilot area to make sure that we have great data to understand how great this is working for us. There would be warnings which would be per plate. Each plate would get a warning. There'd be a link to the new rules. That way the first time you get a ticket you know that there that there's now new rules. You can go and log on to a website and see what those rules are. And then how long would this pilot take? There'd be 180 days experiment, which is six months. And then there'd be a 180 day option for an extension. There would be constant updates to the Transportation Commission and the Board of Trustees, which would tell us if that extension is necessary. And ultimately at the end of the program would tell us if this was successful and if we should continue with it. Here's an example of signage. Again, three hour parking, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., Monday through Saturday. A very clear and consistent message when this is the only type of time limit that you have to see. And then no parking, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Mondays. Again, a clear and consistent message when this is the only no parking restriction that you have to see. One of the constant questions that we received was how does this impact the fiscal budget? So here's what we know about the 2018 capital budget for the parking division. As approved by the Village Board of Trustees and regardless if a parking pilot is to occur, staff intends to stay within the budget amounts and not make any major changes due to the pilot project. We know that there is a budget for on-street pay stations to replace meters. We know that it's been budgeted for on-street parking regulation signs. We know that there has been a budget for parking wayfinding signs. We know that there's a budget for unified parking technology, which includes parking technology that would assist with fulfillment of permits, passes, and vehicle stickers. Citation management technology, parking enforcement handhelds and systems, and mobile license, rec uh, license plate recognition systems for vehicles. Again, these are all something that's been budgeted for. As in terms of the pilot area, we don't believe that there would be a significant change in any pricing to, due to that pilot. And what we'd actually be doing is leveraging our initial rollout of the technology to program 
uh, these, these new rules. And programming, you're talking about a few hours of programming. Here's what we know about the parking pilot program. We've created more parking options in existing parking spaces that were previously not available. And what do we mean by that? We mean day parking for residents, their guests and service workers and service providers. We mean overnight parking for residents and their guests. And we believe that we've strengthened the parking restrictions on residential streets. What do we mean by that? Again, we feel that with a clear and concise message, enforcement efforts become easier and the message to residents become easier, thus compliance becomes easier. We believe we've simplified parking rules and restrictions, making it easier to understand, making it consistent, making it an easier message, making enforcement process easier, as stated by the police department. We've made adjudication process easier, and we've made, e we've made for more compliance. And finally, we've strengthened the parking restrictions for the overnight parking ban from 2.30 a.m by the use of registered vehicles, which must belong to a resident or their guest in order to be able to park during those hours. So how would we measure success and the evaluation of the pilot? This is an open discussion with the, par uh, with the parking, excuse me, with the Transportation Commission in conjunction with the parking division and multiple layers of staff and divisions and departments. Uh, but here's an initial beginning of what the Transportation Commission discussed at their last meeting. We need public feedback from both residents and businesses. We need to see compliance of the new rules. That's something that police would be able to, and adjudication would be able to show us some figures on. We'd like to check for duplicate offenders to see how hard it is to comply with the rules. And that would be in between both warning tickets and actual citations. The police department in conjunction with the adjudication department would verify the comparison of parking citations in the pilot uh, during the pilot period as compared to previous years. The information technology department in conjunction with the finance department would verify comparison of vehicle sticker comp compliance for the pilot area as compared to previous years. And staff would report to the Transportation Commission and the board multiple times during the pilot, as we previously stated. That brings us to the conclusion of this presentation. We look forward to seeing you all at the up and coming Transportation Commission meeting, April 23rd at Village Hall, 7 p.m. Thank you for your time. And again, we look forward to hearing your input.